I'm loaded with yard scraps, but I'm short on time. So let's see if we can make some ornaments from Pinterest that I won't be embarrassed to hang on my tree. Hey everybody, it's me, Margaret. And why is it that everything I see on Pinterest makes me feel like I can do this? But sometimes it just doesn't turn out that way, especially for those of us who are not naturally artistic. But actually I found some success, so come on with me, let's look through these tutorials and I'll share with you some tips that I picked up along the way. This Pinterest picture led me to a blog called Love Knitting, and of course you'll find the link in the description box below. Looks simple enough. Wrap one side with cake colors and the other side with icing white. Add the holly berries and bells and leaves. So I gathered my supplies. Now I'm very fond of the Clover Pom Pom Makers and we'll be using those. I settled on this greenish one which is approximately two and a half inches in diameter and this baby pink one which is about one and three eighth inch I think the package said. For what I was thinking at the time was going to be a cherry but I stupidly figured out that it's supposed to be a sprig of holly with its red berries. <laughs> And my pudding has three shades of brown and white for the icing. Time to get started. I grabbed the white and wrapped all of one side, filling it right to the top. Then I prepared the cake with all three browns, which you may have noticed was a different color choice than the original instructions, but I took some artistic license there. Closed both sides and it's time to clip. Now here's a little trick for those of us who are having hand troubles right now. If, you're, if you can't cut with scissors for whatever reason, because this is thick, and so you need some really sharp scissors. But if you don't have that, use a razor blade or a craft knife or a box cutter or whatever you, you can to slice through. Once you get it thin enough, it's easy to just go in and clip those things. And then repeat on the icing side. And my camera just cut off on me. Now I need to tie something in the middle. Now you could use your hanger ribbon, whatever it is you wanted to use, red, gold, but I found that just good old yarn seems to tie it tighter for me and I think it's because it's a little bit thinner. We've really got it packed in there because we wanted a full and uh, compact palm. So, now learn from my mistake. I had tied several times around to make it nice and tight, but I finished with my cake part on the top. Now my pudding's going to hang upside down. So pay attention unlike I did. But the good news is it's easy to fix with a tapestry needle, so no need to panic. Okay, there we go, down. Now it's all wonky shaped. Here's a tip I recently read about, and I've got this old rag here to catch my, my clippings. But the person I watched flattened her palm like this, and then trimmed around the outside just to get it a little bit more of a sphere shape instead of this wonky commotion I've got going on. shake it out and now we have something a little bit better to work with now do you see how this is kind of loose like this I want my, my palm pieces to be much more compact and filled in so I'm going to cut them even shorter and you can see how they become more compact and less billowy So see what I'm going for, how they're more compact like that than they are here where they're long and spaced out. So I'll keep working on that and I'll meet you back. Okay, I shaved off a good bit of it and I think it came out great. And I love the way it's not exact so it looks as though the icing has sort of dribbled down the side. Isn't that great? Alright, let's see what happens next. Ooh, that goes so much faster when you have a tiny one. Let's do side number two. Okay, and going through the same exact steps 
we will slice and dice tie it up just as you normally would wait a second we need to clip and you repeat this going round and round tying a knot until you feel like you've got it secure I usually do it about three times. Tie it twice on the second time and then you can take it out. Now some people just don't secure it until they remove it from here. They feel like they can actually make it tighter around the middle. I haven't found that to be true. I feel like I can't get it back in its proper place when I do that. So that's how I do it. Okay. Now, this needs to be little. Where is our pump? This needs to be small. This is way too big of a cherry, so I'm going to trim that down. Now, let me interrupt myself here. I was simply following the blog that I thought was the prettiest, this um, Love Knitting blog. But be sure to look around and see how others have used different materials to create their pudding pom-poms. Consider little red bells, buttons, or maybe those tiny palms from the dollar store. Trim down the palm to the size you'd like on your pudding, rounding it as nicely as you can. I could stand some more practice in rounding these pom-poms. Now the next step is to put these little jingle bells onto each tail we have here on the side of the little cherry. Problem is, it's very, very small, the opening. It will not even fit a tapestry needle through, and yet I don't have a needle with a large enough eye that would actually fit through there, so I have a conundrum. A needle threader would be just what I could use, but I can't find one right now. So I went and got some floral wire, and this happened to come from Dollar Tree, great bargain. And I folded some in two. Now this will fit nicely through that opening on the bell, and then it's much easier to thread the yarn through this floral wire eye and then you pull it right back through problem solved and repeat on this side ta-da I wonder if I'm breaking some British rule by using gold instead of red jingle bells hmm and now to attach it Put it back on the tapestry needle and I want it to be right up here on top. So you put that needle through best you can. Wiggle, finagle, do what you need to. There's one. Do the other. And there's two. Now I guess I could move them around as need be. We're going to tie it, making sure we don't tie up any of these brown pieces there. See, it disappears right in there. Do it one more time. And now I can snip my red pieces pretty close in. And it will never be noticed. I'm going to cover it all up. Ta da! Okay, so here's where we are right now. Oh, my jingle bells are too tight. Maybe not pull it so tight when you do yours. Now, I wish I had a darker green felt, but I don't. So we're just going to make do. So I think I'm going to cut um, a couple of squares. It just occurred to me, that's probably not a cherry on top of that pudding. I think it's holly leaves and berries. But isn't that poisonous? Oops, battery issue here. I just snipped curves with pinking shears to make leaves and hot glued them beneath the red pom-pom. Very simple. And it turned out so cute. I think if you do yours, don't tie your, your uh, bell so tightly because they kind of got lost in there. But even so, they add a small little 
glitter. Now I'll tie a knot. And there's the ornament. Ta-da! Now look at these little ornaments. I should have started with these because they were so simple. They're just painted water bottle caps on top of your palm. You add a bow if you like. Now if there's a shortcut, I like to take it. So I bought this little can of silver spray paint from Walmart, but it was too forceful for the tiny caps and I had to chase them all around. I ended up having to pick up the green one to make sure it was covered, which, as we'll observe here, is not a good way to paint your nails. So I have here some painted water bottle caps, and they're different sizes. The ones that I buy from Walmart are so thin now, which is really good. I'm glad that they're trying to use less plastic. But they need to be a little bit taller. This is a Dansani water bottle cap, and I thought I was going to be so clever, and I chose spray paint. So I'll tell you right now, I think it would probably be easier, even though this worked perfectly well, but it probably wouldn't jump all around on the paper and you wouldn't have to touch it and accidentally spray your fingernail and all that kind of stuff if you just painted it on. Once they were completely dry, I got this ancient awl that we have had. Um, I think this was mine, when my family's when I was a little girl. Look how it's even rusted, but of course it still serves its purpose. And I put it down in the grass and I poked a hole. That way I wouldn't be, you know, poking a hole in anything underneath. And it was so easy to do. But now I realize I need it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to, and, it, and here's a problem too. This has this raised thing right there, so I couldn't get it exactly in the middle. But as it turns out, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm going to make it larger. So I guess it doesn't matter which direction you put it in, but if you put it that way, then your rounded edges are going to go down underneath, which I think would look a little bit better. So you've got a pom-pom ready to go, and you merely thread these through. Easier said than done. So I'm going to get my handy dandy needle threader that I created out of floral wire. That's hard to say. And I'm inserting it from top to underside like that. Spread it apart and you can stick both strands in there and then pull it back through. Whoops, thought I got both strands. Okay, now here is the big trick. Don't pull it too tightly. Just drop it down until it meets the top of the ball. Okay, you don't want to bury it down in there. You just want it to sit nicely on top. Okay, then you want to tie a knot that will be your hanger. I like my hangers to be approximately three inches, I've found. I didn't know how long that was. I just was eyeballing it. So you could do the same thing. Just think in your head, how long would I like this hanger to be? And I put both strands through, tie a little knot, and trim off the excess. And now you have a cute little... Christmas ball of yarn. The good thing about this is you could actually make up for your own decor. It's a great way to use up your scrap yarn, customize your colors. But keep in mind they can be even cuter without the mess of that bottle cap. Now I was feeling pretty confident with my improved cutting skills. I was really bad at trimming palms for a while and I can see where I'm improving now. So I tried my hand at seeing if I could imitate a light shape, like an old-fashioned Christmas light, and so I did this. Not sure if it's a go or not, if I like it, but I'm also seeing the possibility of maybe having it be a Christmas tree in some form or fashion. Hmm. So now I got this in my head that this is going to be a Christmas tree. My Christmas tree is going to lean as we use this for an experiment. Okay, I found these little things I had for ages. They look like tiny little Christmas lights and you can see it's a tiny little hole. So first I thought, okay, why don't we just stick them in the tree? But they're really too big for this tree. I think if I used another pom-pom maker and created a larger tree, that that would work just fine. But I don't know. Let's try another method. Okay, and that just looks stupid. <laughs> 
totally out of proportion. New plan. I found these in my drawer. I got them on sale last year at a closeout, so let's put them to work. Okay, now I'm on to something. Let me show you how I figured it out the easiest way to apply these. Now I suppose they could be sewn on, but I think I'm finding better luck by putting a dot of good old school glue and dropping on a button. I had that one upside down, so I messed up. Then give it in a tap with the needle. Um, of course, a toothpick would probably be best, so you wouldn't get glue on your needle, but this is that washable stuff, and it's not a problem. But wouldn't that look better when I if I had a whole multicolor set of buttons? But I like it. And so now I went rooting through my stuff, and I found a star-shaped button. Problem is, it was black. So I spray painted it with that famous spray paint that I had. And now we have a star topper. Does it have to be straight? Ta-da! Now look at this. The very same blogger who taught us how to make that Christmas pudding has a tutorial for a Christmas tree palm. Look how much cuter it is. I'll link this one below. Now this is a precious little ornament that I have shown um, on numerous occasions. There are lots and lots of different tutorials for this, but the one I used was actually a video tutorial from Alex, who is also a part of the Sheepishly Sharing community. I'm going to link that down below. It's very simple. You make the palm and then it's a simple, simple little crocheted hat. And you make a palm for the top, or you could just buy one of those cheap palms from, um, you know, the little sets you can get from the Dollar Tree easy and I just added a little hanger on the top so there you go. There are also lots of adorable pom-pom snowmen tutorials out there but this one does a really great job with step-by-step -step pictures and includes accessories like mittens and headgear. And once you get your snowman skills down here's an adorable wreath to make. I love this and again all the links will be in the description box below. Now after seeing how easy this stuff is, do you really need to buy a kit to make these reindeer? I don't think so. Use your scraps and refer to the picture. Same for these funny little guys. There's no kit for these and not even any instructions for that matter, but you can see how simple it is to try your hand at them. Have fun! So I guess the moral of the story is that it, it is possible. It is possible if you are not artistic to come up with some things that are actually pretty darn cute. You just gotta find the ones that match your skill level. And these are certainly simple enough and anybody can do those, especially kids. Good thought, huh? So maybe you found a few of these that you'd like to try. And if that's the case, be sure to look in the description box for the links that I used. And um, don't forget some of the tips that I learned along the way. So thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.